Hello, my beautiful friend. Welcome back. This is Pablo and police. We're coming in. Where police, is he? Police. Where is he? You better get running. We're coming for you. Damn. I guess we're going for it. I need a drink, dude. Huh? Tequila bar. Never seen one of those. Oh, dang. There's a lot of fucking tequila. Buenvenidos al par de tequila de Pablo. ¿Deseas algo de beber? Tequila tal vez. No creo que sé lo que quiero todavía. Uh, ¿Me puedes dar un...? Uh, este man no sabe nada de tequila. Que te largues. Lárgate. No sabe nada. Lárgate. Que se jode. Afuera de México. Ya no te queremos aquí. Vete. Estoy desesperado por saber si en realidad lo amas a... Finally back home. <sighs> What's up, mis amigos? It's awesome to see you. You're looking especially great today. And no, it's not just a shot of tequila talking. <laughs> Many of you have had the more party type of experience with tequila. Today we're going to be talking about and looking at tequila in a different way. I would love to share the flavor profiles, the depth, and the fact that there's so much you could do with just one agave plant. So to begin with, tequila must be made in Mexico, in the uh, tequila region, as well as Jalisco. In the US and Canada, tequila must be at least 40% alcohol or 80 proof. And something that I really wanted to touch on and I think is super cool is kind of like the origin of tequila. So the story goes that there were these Aztecs and there was a huge drought. These dudes were thirsty. <laughs> Suddenly a huge thunderstorm. There was lightning as well and some of the lightning struck some agave plants. And this showed the Aztec people roasty, sweet, toasty smell of the agave. And it gave them the idea of taking the agave and fermenting it, distilling it, and they made a white creamy drink called pulque. And that is like the granddaddy of tequila. So enough about a little bit of the history. Let's get to tasting tequila, shall we? Okay, so we're going to be starting off with a Blanco tequila. So the Blanco is 9 times out of 10 going to be unaged, but technically it can be aged from 0 to 2 months. Most people don't really do that because of the fact that product is money and time is money, so they don't really want to waste their time aging it unnecessarily. To be considered a tequila, you must be made with at least 51% blue agave, but in the case of everything we're drinking today, I only chose 100% pure agave because I do not like the uh, the flavors and sometimes they use cheaper alcohols in order to uh, meet the proof requirement without using all the uh, delicious flavor of the blue agave. We're going to be tasting Espelon for our tequilas today. So something that most people don't really do with tequila and give it as respect is that it is a delicious flavorful alcohol. Uh, the Blanco tequila is going to be the most aggressive in terms of flavor of the agave plant. Let's taste this bad boy. Mm. It almost smells like lemongrass, maybe like fresh cut grass, definitely a lot of agave. It smells good. It smells pretty straightforward though for a, for a Blanco tequila. It smells very alcoholic. Let's taste it. Very loud agave flavors. Delicious. It's very smooth. Not bad for a, a sip or two. This is what we used earlier to film the, the shot. Chill it up real nice. You just shoot it back real quick. I could see this going really good with a margarita. I could see this going really good with a Paloma as well. Either one of those would be a really, really delicious way to showcase those bright, light flavors of the uh, agave without having to break the bank too much. Very, very delicious. Yeah, Espelon's pretty good stuff, so try it out. Now let's move on to the next one, which is going to be our Reposado tequila. All right, so now we have our Reposado tequila. So pretty much what they do is that they'll take the distilled agave syrup, which is the Blanco tequila. They're going to go ahead and age 
for two to 12 months or for three to 12 months. It'll give it those caramel, coconut, vanilla flavors that uh, you wanna look for in a whiskey. However, it doesn't completely get rid of the agave flavor because it's a reposado. And that's why I think reposados are honestly one of the best ways to get into tequila, is that it'll give you the smoothness of a whiskey, but it'll still have that little bit of a kick that uh, Blanco tequila is definitely known for. So, enough talking about it, let's go ahead and taste this shit. Wow. Immediately, you get the, the notes of aging in the nose. I get like a little bit of wood. Uh, excuse me. Hmm. Yeah, I get a little bit of wood. I get almost like a, uh, a caramelized banana note. It might be just uh, sweet caramel and a little bit of like a fruity flavor. It's less astringent on the nose. The, uh, the first Espelon was a little bit, uh, uh, it kind of bur burned my nose hairs, just the hair. <laughs> but this one's way smoother. Yeah, it smells a little bit like a whiskey. It smells like uh, caramel, smells like vanilla, smells like toasted spices. All right, let's taste it. That's what good pussy sounds like. Forefront, I would say still that agave plant. Uh, tastes really, really good though. The essence of what the, the Blanco Tequila's agave was, and you almost like dipped it in a caramel sauce, almost like a candied apple. It's very, very good. Um, so that's the first thing. Obviously caramel as well. Yeah, I definitely get some baking spices though. Some baking spices, a little bit of coconut, a little bit of vanilla. It almost is like banana Laffy Taffy, which is kind of weird, I know, but it, sm it smells very sweet. It smells um, kind of tropical. It smells a little, a little weirdly fake, but it's all 100% agave and just aged. But it smells really good, tastes really good. This would be an awesome drink for a margarita. I love a margarita with reposado tequila. Um, you could also make a lot of really nice deeper cocktails with this flavor, and you'd get you get more than your money's worth with that, with that spot. Uh, very, very good tequila thus far. So let's let's keep open for more and let's taste the next one. Cheers. Alrighty y'all, so last but definitely not least in the terms of tequila tastings, we have an Añejo tequila. So this one is finished in bourbon barrels. Um, most tequilas, most Añejos are aged in bourbon barrels. So I wonder what they mean by the finish. Um, I'll probably look into it a little bit more, but. What's up y'all? So I was in the middle of editing when I noticed this and I looked it up. So what they do is that they take the Blanco tequila, they age it for 10 months in new American oak. And then after they're done, they finish it in used wild turkey bourbon barrels. And that uh, that does add the flavor of the bourbon. And it makes you really yummy. All right, guys. Well, that's our cue. Enjoy the video. Uh, finish like we went over in our last video is that it is aged and then it is almost like touched or rested in um, barrels of a specific spirit. So in this case, bourbon barrels are used, which are charred, very caramel, very sweet. Um, bourbon specifically is nice and corny, so it adds really good, deep, rich flavors to it. Look for something like that if you want to look for a uh, tequila with your specific type of uh, personality. Añejo tequilas are aged for at least one year, and they can be aged for up to three years. All right, so let's go ahead and pour this. There we go. If you can see it, uh, the color is definitely darker than the Reposado. Here we go. This one's gonna be a little bit clearer, a little bit more on the Blanco side. This one is darker. So let's go ahead and taste it. Oh wow, on the nose, it smells so good. It is definitely way less alcoholy than the Reposado and like <laughs> incomparable to the Blanco. So this is gonna be usually what people sip on, just the same way people sip on whiskey, a very nice whiskey. So, smells really good. You, that, you get the sweetness of the agave, you get the sharpness, the brightness of the agave too. So if I had to compare this one, uh, just like the other one was an agave candy apple, this would be almost like a uh, agave cake where the agave itself is in most of the ingredient, but it has a lot of spice, it has a lot of almost sweetness, uh, brown sugar, and then it's gonna have a little bit of the brightness of the agave, almost kind of like a, uh, a carrot cake, but it smells delicious. Mm. Yeah, it smells like vanilla. All right, let's taste it. It might be weird to say it, but I'll just say it. A strangely minty aspect to it. Um, 
It could be kind of like the lemongrass of the regular Blanco, considering this is the same brand, kind of morphing in flavor. So for me, it tastes a little minty, which is kind of weird. Definitely get the brown sugar note richer in flavor than the Reposado. It definitely does have that agave kind of bite to it. Not as sweet as a whiskey. I would say this tequila is pretty good for sipping. Uh, if you want to do a couple ice cubes to kind of help lighten it up, that would be really yummy. A uh, old fashioned substituting the Añejo for the bourbon or the rye in that case would also be delicious. And cocktails with an Añejo tequila, as long as you're not uh, breaking the bank on an Añejo, it'll add really nice, deep, rich flavors uh, to anything. Uh, if you make a margarita with it, I feel like the acidity will be a little too much for the, the dark, oaky, rich flavors of it. But I would say something like, like a Oaxacan Old Fashioned, or maybe even anything with like spice notes it would really pair well with the tequila, the Añejo itself. A delicious, delicious one, uh, but that is our, it for our tequila. So another one that there are is a uh, extra Añejo. So this has to be aged one to three years, and an extra Añejo uh, could be three years or at the very minimum. And those are out of this show's budget, but um, they're gonna be more like bourbons, more like whiskeys than uh, regular tequila. So that's something for you to try out for yourself. Go ahead and give it a bottle, or if you wanna send us a bottle, I'll definitely taste it for the, uh, the camera. The Añejo tequila is delicious, and I hope you try out some of these tequilas. But we have one more little surprise, and let's get to it. Alrighty, so let's do mezcal. So saying mezcal is tequila's smoky cousin is a little bit oversimplistic. Uh, there's a lot of different types of mezcal. There's probably more types of mezcal than there are uh, regular tequila because these are made with a lot of different types of agave plants, not just a blue agave plant. Uh, delicious, it's gonna be roasted and they kind of leave them on the ground for a while so you get roasty, toasty, earthy flavors. Absolutely delicious. Uh, so enough talking about it and let's taste it. There we go. Right, cheers, y'all. Oh, wow. Oh. So on the nose, lots of smoke notes. It smells a little bit like a, if you use sweet wood almost and you made a campfire out of sweet wood. In the background, I get like almost tropical fruit notes, maybe like pineapple or like almost like a sour papaya, maybe like a mango, something like that. I get herbaceous and like citrus notes, so maybe like a lemongrass. Delicious, let's go ahead and taste it. The taste is a little less smoky than the actual smell itself. Really, really good though. It's perfect for substituting in a margarita. This would go delicious with a margarita. Uh, that's probably one of the best ways you can introduce a mezcal to someone that's never had it, is just slip it in a little bit of margarita, you know? Uh, very, very good stuff though. It'll add nice smokiness, a little bit of complexity to many drinks that you might just uh, be used to having. A Paloma would be delicious with it as well. Please try out some mezcal. If you've never had it, it'll add a little something to your bar that most places don't have. But extremely delicious stuff. I hope you've learned something about tequila, learned something about some mezcal. Very cool stuff and a world of opportunity opens when you start playing around with tequila. But it's always awesome to have you. It's always awesome to share a drink with you. I hope to see you back in this corner of the world and I hope to see you back soon. Take care. Have a good one. All right. Take care. Bye. Oh my goodness. You look so cute, Chungus. Oh, you just laying in there. That feels so sad. You want daddy to come pet you? Oh my goodness, look at that belly. Oh my god.